following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Hebraic Satanic Myth. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that Jehovah Elohim made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For Jehovah Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not Adam to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And Jehovah Elohim formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. And Jehovah Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put Adam whom he had formed. <coughs> This is the first verses of the second chapter of the book of Genesis, which describes, of course, in synthesis, what we are going to explain today about the generations of the heaven and the earth. As you see uh, in those scriptures, you find that there is always opposites. The heaven above, the earth below. And of course, uh, the ground, the field, which is always related to the lower aspect of uh, the tree of life, which is called Malkut. Because the heaven are above and the earth is below. Also in Genesis you find day and night, the opposites uh, of death and life. And of course all of this is related with uh, uh, the two aspects of divinity that are needed in order to create, which uh, in every myth is named God and Satan. So, in order to understand uh, uh, how, the, how these generations were made by Jehovah Elohim, we had to write the name of Jehovah or how it is written in Hebrew. Yod, He, Vav, He. Yod, He, Vav, He. 
These are the four letters that in Greek is called the tetragrammaton. And uh, in order for you to follow what we are uh, explaining here, you have to concentrate in your body, your physical body. As in many lectures we explain and we repeat again, Yod relates to the head. It's a letter related to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we said in other lectures that the letter Yod is hidden with the letter Aleph, which are three Yods, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the letter Yod is the tenth because relates, of course, to the ten sephiroth. So that yod is just a dot of the first spot that appears in the universe. That first spot is Keter, the father, which also means crown in Hebrew. Now, in relation with the name, the second letter is He. And we always place that He in that here, in the throat. That's Yod He. Usually is what uh, in Hebrew is called Ja. At the end of the word Hallelujah, Ja. Relates to these only two letters, Ja, Yod and He, which is of course related with the throat and the head, which is called heaven, <coughs> or the world of Azilus, the world of archetypes, which are of course related in ourselves with those elements that we call thoughts, that are eventually becoming concrete in us. If we utter the word and if we perform things with our hands, or what we're thinking. The third letter is the letter Vav. That many times we state it is related with the spinal column, the medulla, spinal medulla. And the last hey. The sexual organs. This is how you see it. Yod he bab he in your body. This is how the name of God relates in relation with what we call the tree of knowledge. Remember that the tree of knowledge relates to the sephira that which many times we explained it relates to the caduceus of mercury so please imagine also the caduceus of mercury in which you find the duality, the two serpents that we were talking about that are entwined around the spinal column, which is the caduceus, because the sphere on top of that caduceus is the head. That's what we're talking about here, about the letter Yod, and implies all of this, four, you see? These four sephiroth, the first triangle, Keter, Chokma, Bina, and the lower triangle called Dat. That's the sphere of the Caduceus of Mercury. The wings of the Caduceus of Mercury symbolizes the energy, the spirit. That is spirit is what the Bible is talking about, what we were reading. Jehovah Elohim. 
which is the name or the sacred name of God in the Sephira Bina. Let me remind you about the sacred names just of the first triangle. Keter, Chokma, Bina are the first triangle or the tree of life. And the sacred names of God written in that first triangle is the first one, Keter, is Eheye, Asher, Eheye, which means I am what I am. Or oh, we will say it, he is what he is. The second uh, triangle called Chokmah, the sacred name of God is Jehovah. It's the first sphere where the sacred name, the Tetragrammaton, appears. yod he bab he here. Jehovah. But Jehovah Elohim, which is written, there in the beginning where we were reading, Jehovah Elohim is related with Bina. Remember that we were reading that these are the generations of the heaven and the earth when Jehovah Elohim created the earth and the heavens in the beginning. So this Jehovah Elohim, of course, is what in Christianity is called the Holy Spirit. So, when we talk about the tree of knowledge, we're talking about the unfoldment of the Holy Spirit through the tree of knowledge or the tree of good and evil. And this is very important to understand because when we go into that, we go into the mysteries of the Holy Spirit. But remember, and don't forget, that within Bina is Chokmah and Keter. Because these three Sephiroth are called the Holy Trinity. And in order to understand uh, uh, how the Holy Trinity is one, it's simple. Just put your imagination in your body again. Your head is the Father, your heart is the Son, and your sex is the Holy Spirit. And you are one. One person, but three parts. And that's very important. When you read the Bible or, or any scripture, to remember that you have three brains. The intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the motor sexual instinctual brain which relate to the, th the th first uh, triangle, the tree of life. So in that way, <coughs> you understand how uh, the Holy Spirit has the other two aspects. Why? Because the sexual energy is the outcome of what we think, head, and of what we feel, heart. So, of course, in the head we have the brain, thoughts, the way of thinking, the way that we have ideas, concepts, reasoning. In the heart we have the feelings that relate to the blood. You remember that the blood circulates in all the organism. And remember that that blood has the breath of life that we take through the nostrils, which are in the head. So you see how the breath of life in the head that we take through the nostrils goes into the lungs and purifies the blood. And that blood goes into the sex and it becomes the sexual energy. So in that way, we understand how Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, which is the creative energy, contains the other two forces in our body. As below, so above, and so above, so below. This is the axiom of Hermes Trismegistus. 
which of course is the head or the master or the caduceus of Mercury. Because we have that symbol in the caduceus of Mercury, or the, or which is, in other words, the symbol of the tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge. Now, so that's the name what the book of Genesis states telling us in the beginning. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth, etc., etc., by Jehovah Elohim. So Jehovah, as you said, is yod he vav he And we already said, if you analyze that in your physical body, jaw is in the head, he is in the throat, vav is your spinal medulla, and he, again, is your sexual organs. So where is Elohim there? Because it's Jehovah Elohim. And this precisely is a mystery here. In relation with that, the word Ela, Aleph, Lamed, Hey, Ela, how do you read it? It means goddess. Because just Aleph and Lamed by itself is God, masculine. But when you are always the he at the end of a Hebrew word, is a feminine word. So, Ela is a feminine word which means goddess. And the other letters, Yod and M of Elohim, we will say Elahim. Im, Yod and Mem form the word which means sea. Ocean. So Elaim means the goddess of the sea. You see? Just literally. Goddess, sea. The goddess of the sea. And who is this goddess of the sea? Well, it's Venus that was born from the sea. But we are going now into Greek mythology. <coughs> but let us return to Hebrew mythology. That's what we call Shekinah. That Shekinah is the goddess of the sea. Or in other words, the force within the sexual waters of Yesod. Because the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge, had his roots in Yesod. And Yesod is a sexual energy. Or that sexual fluid that we always name in different lectures which are related with the semen. Whether the feminine semen or the masculine semen, that is that liquid or fluid that both of us, men and women, have in our sexuality. So that is Elaim, the goddess of the sea, which is, of course, the place where we find the waters. And that's why when you read the book of Genesis, it says there that in the beginning, Elohim, or Elaim, created the heavens and the earth. Hmm? So the God is created. But again, remember that the sexual waters receive the forests of the heart and of the brain. So the goddess contains the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit within. Like, for instance, a woman creates the body. Our bodies that we have, physical bodies, were created by a woman, our mother. But because a man put the sperm there, but, of course, the one that created us was a woman. Nine months. So the cooperation, the sexual cooperation, enters into the tree of knowledge. That. That way we understand how Elaim made the heavens and the earth from the very bottom. And that's why it is written that the Ruach Elohim was floating or hovering upon the face of the waters. 
that Ruach Elohim is that strength, that power that comes from above. And that in many lectures we have stated it is, according to Kabbalah, Abraham. If you read the, uh, what is written there in the generations of uh, the heaven and the earth, you find that we wrote the word Behi Baram, which means they were created. But if this is an anagram, an acrostic that we can uh, modify. Behe. This is how it is written in Hebrew. Behe Baram. Be is the letter Bet, which means Chokma, which is a word that we explain in many other lectures. It begins with Bereshit, the mystery of Chokma, wisdom. Behe means Chokma through the He. And that He is the second He here. So the Bet of Chokma through the He created. Behi Baram. But this Baram means Abraham. Abraham. And in order to understand that is easy. When we take this symbol into the Hinduism. According to Hinduism, the creator is called Brahma. With exact, that has exactly letters of Abraham. Brahma is the creator. And the wife of Brahma, the creator, is Saravasti. The goddess Saravasti. And uh, look for the similitude here. Brahma and Saravasti, the two polarities of the Holy Spirit. The two forces of creation, creating. And in Abraham, we find Abraham and Sarah. Not Saravasti, but the only Sarah. Isn't that uh, amazing to see how it relates to each? Because all religions have the same principles. But of course, when we said Brahma and Saravasti, we are talking in Sanskrit, not in Hebrew. But we are talking here in Hebrew. Abraham and Sarah. Sarah Vasti means, by the way, the essence. The essence of God, or the essence of the creative force. This is Sarah. Which relates, of course, to the forces of Elaim in the bottom of the tree of life. The woman. Because when you study the two polarities of the tree of good and evil, those two polarities in Hebrew are called Tov and Ra. Tov is the right side of the tree of life, and Ra is the left side. But also, alchemically speaking, in Kabbalah, they are called Od and Obd. You remember that. Odd means witness. And odd mean servant or companion. So by knowing that, we understand the tree of good and evil, that. Because these two polarities relates to the, t the two types of waters that we have, that we name in other lectures. Those type of fluids of waters, creative forces, are the masculine, which are called Taub, or odd witness, is the cerebral spinal fluid. The cerebral and spinal fluid relates to Taub, 
to good, to that witness. And the other fluid that we call the sexual fluid, the semen, or that fluid that we have in the uterus and in the prostate, is the other side. If you see the fluid of the prostate or the uterus is in the bottom of the body. Well, the other fluid relates to the brain. And that's why we said always, the brain is Adam, the masculine fluid, while the woman, Eve, is the feminine fluid that nourishes the sexual glands. And that way is how you are associating the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge, with your body. Adam above, Eve below. In the sexual act, the man is above and the woman is below, sexually speaking. So this is how you see the two polarities of this mysterious tree of good and evil. Because that goddess, Ela, is in the im, in the sea, in the waters. And uh, this is how you understand how the generations of the heavens and of the earth were made. By the two polarities, above and below. Hermes Trimagistus said, as above, so below, and as below, so above. And of course, <coughs> here, these two polarities in the tree of life are related with these two forces of the sun, which is Tifereth, and the moon, which is Jesod, which also relates to Malkut. So that's why it says, the father is the sun, and the mother is the moon. Talking about that element that we need to create. And the wind had it in his belly. That wind is the Ruach that we're talking here, Ruach Elohim, that is Abraham. The father of the height, that means Abraham. So when you talk about Abraham in Kabbalah, you're talking about Chesed, which is our own particular individual spirit. That is the Ruach Elohim. That is always together with the goddess of the sea, our divine mother. But this Abraham also is in the mystery of that, and is called Abba. The Abraham, Abraham, it's Abba. It also relates to Keter, which is the father, and even beyond Abraham. That's why it is written, Behi Baram, which means by Abraham, were the generations of the heaven and the earth made. But this Abraham was hovering on the waters in the beginning. On the waters of the goddess. Because the goddess is the one that creates. But needs the assistance of that Abraham. Or as we see in the pictures in, in, in Hindu mythology. Brahma creates but utilizes the waters in order to do it. Of Sarah, the essence of life. Sarasti. In this case, we have to remember that the ray of creation that we call the ray of Okidanak, that begins from the absolute and ends in hell, contains that ruach, that force of creation, that willpower, that descends from above into the very bottom, the center of the earth. But this ray of creation, ray of Okidanak, needs, in order to create, 
that element that is called water. Without the water, the ray of Okidanok, ray of creation, can do nothing. So we have, of course, the power of create. Have the power of creation in us, as men. But without the woman, we are nothing. What can we create? If we don't have a feminine element in order for the sperm to grow and to develop. That's why the man is called fire and the woman is called water. But the water contains the fire. That's why in the universe, in order for creation to exist, any planet needs water. This planet Earth has water, but that is the only planet that has water. In order for life to exist, there is the need to water to be, to exist as well. And it's necessary because that water is what we call dharma, the law. In other words, the law expresses itself through the water. Those laws that we create, that, that, uh, I mean, that we know as creation. So in order for dharma, the law, to exist, there is a necessity of the water. When the water disappears from the planet, it cannot be life. So Dharma, the law, expresses itself to the waters of Elaim, the waters of sexuality. There you find the mystery of the tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge. When you or when we utilize the sexual waters in the wrong way, we break the law. Because the lies contain within the water. And that's why it says that in the beginning, the Ruach Elohim was hovering upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. That is the very beginning. This is how we had to comprehend and understand that. <coughs> but behold... That when you read the book of Genesis, the third chapter, stays always there in relation with the myth, with Satan, with the serpent. That the serpent was the most subtle, haya force, animal force, that God created, that Elohim, or Yahovah Elohim created. Because the creator, as we are studying here, is Jehovah Elohim, Bina, the Holy Spirit, Shiva in Hinduism. That serpent, of course, is that force that circulates in the blood, that circulate, circulates in our nervous system. It's everywhere. That's why it is written that when the uh, there were uh, the children of God were gathering around Jehovah Elohim. In the book of Job is written. Among the children of God, they were coming Satan, which is that force that we're talking about that circulates in our body. Where do you come from? Ask Jehovah Elohim to Satan. And he says, Well, to go up and down in the earth, up and down, to and fro. The earth is a physical body. This is the habitat of Satan. Or better said, Lucifer as well, if you want. But in us it's Satan. It's not Lucifer because Satan is the opposite. It's called the contrary, the opposite. Well, when we study Kabbalah, we learn that the spirit is above and the matter is below. So the contrary of the spirit is the matter. Which in Latin, mater means mother. Uh -huh. And of course, the contrary in Hebrew is Satan. So in other words, the power of Lucifer, the power of Satan, is in our physical body. It's what it is. 
It's not outside. Well, it is outside too. As in uh, Nordic mythology, you find that the power of the dragon is in nature. But remember that we are the microcosmo of the macrocosmos. So this dragon that we call Lucifer is a, the fire of the energy of nature of the four elements. It's everywhere. And in us, of course. Because we are a replica of the planet. We're a philosophical earth where we find that force which is the contrary of the spirit. It's a spirit. It's the same element. This is an unfoldment of that spirit that enters into the earth. The physicality. And that's why Jehovah Elohim asked Satan, how do you see my, my servant Job? This servant as I told you, is obd. And obd, which is that other serpent in the left of the caduceus of Mercury, relates to the sexual fluid. So, Jehovah Elohim, the creator, is asking Satan, who is the one that circulates in the physical body, the force of creation of God, the one that gives sexual potency to the male, and to the woman, how do you see your ser my servant Job? Is he right? And he says, Satan, well, if you give me your permission, I will test him if he really is loving you, that you are above, above here in the head. And then the Jehovah Elohim said to Satan, it's in your hands. Do whatever you want to do, but don't hurt him in his life. Keep, keep him alive, but do whatever. And Satan comes down from heaven and goes down into the earth, which is the physicality of Job, in order to test him. So you see here the relationship of God with the devil, or with Satan. This is the myth. That is written in many parts in the Bible. And that's why in the book of Genesis it is written that Satan, the tempting serpent, came to tempt Eve, the woman. Because the physicality, we repeat many times, is female. And the female is tempted first. Which is our physicality. Which also is our sexuality. And this is why Eve takes first the temptation and falls into temptation. And thereafter, Adam eats from the hands of Eve. Because Eve takes the apple or the fruit and says, here, taste it. I taste it already. In other words, the sexual organ experience the sexual orgasm and that sensation goes into the brain and says take it taste the fruit and Adam takes it bites it too because we are related sex and brain and that is the beginning of the myth of the falling of Adam and Eve because they couldn't control that blood which is the fire that circulates because the blood is a vehicle of the spirit because the blood is a vehicle of that force that comes from above and goes into the sex as we explained in the beginning Aleph the breath of God goes into your lungs the lungs purifies the blood and the blood goes into sex and becomes the sexual fluid and in the moment of the sexual act, that bloody force circulates like the sword in the blood that brandish from one side to the other. And usually, of course, 
the man and the woman cannot control that sexual potency and always they fall into temptation. So you follow me? Do you see the tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge in you? And that's why Satan relates to the woman. Or the action of Satan is in the sex. That's the beginning. So when somebody is tested by Satan, is doing it in sex, the sexual act. And of course, that's why lust is called the original sin. Because from lust, the rest of defects, vices, and error were originated. So lust is the origin. But of course, this is a great battle between, as we see here, good and evil. Uh -huh, battle about good and evil, right? And what is good? I said, the right side. The cerebral spinal fluid. And what is evil or ra in our case? The sexual fluid. So the Master Samael on Veor states in his books, there is a battle between brain and sex, sex and brain. And what is the more painful is heart against heart. If sex wins the battle against the brain, we fall into temptation. But if the brain wins the battle against sex, we defeat temptation. Now this battle between good and evil is inside of us. It's not outside. Everything is inside. This is all this is the symbols that we have to learn. It is obvious that we, all of us who are here present, we fell into temptation. We fell from temptation. None of us is a victorious. But we can be victorious if we want. A victor. And that's why we're learning this. Because we are already out of Eden. We went out of Eden, or the terrestrial paradise, after being in Eden. Because we broke the law. But you have to understand and to comprehend that the two trees of life and tree of good and evil are inside of us. They are not outside. Related with the tree of life, we said, Keter, which is the crown, is that crown on top of the head, that light that we call the crown, or the chakra sahasrara. Then, Bina is the left hemisphere of the brain, and Chokma, the right hemisphere of the brain. Then, we have Chesed and Gebura below that. And that is related with the shoulders. But if we want to associate them with the physical body, they are associated with the lungs. Because that Ruach Elohim that we talk about is always related with these two sephiroth. Sarah and Abraham. That are the spirit that will purify the blood, which is Tifereth, the heart. That's why in the heart we have the purified blood, which is called Jacob. So these two, Abraham and Isaac, the forces of the second triangle are related, of course, with the lungs and the heart. And the other triangle here below, the tree of life, Netzach and Chod, is related with the kidneys. And Yesod with the sexual organ. Remember that in Taoism, we teach 
that the strength of the sex comes from the kidneys. If you want sexual strength, you have to nourish your kidneys, your netzayin hod in your body. And finally, malkut, which is the very baton, is related with your feet. Or, better said, with all of your physicality. Mm -hmm. I mean your skeleton, your muscles, all that that made the body. That's malkut, the physicality. But related with the feet. So this is how the tree of life is related with your body. And the tree of good and evil is the spinal column. Mm -hmm. Spinal medulla. And the two opposite forces that we explained already. The fluid of the brain and the fluid of the sex. The two forces there in battle. And in the middle, in our spinal medulla, in the center, is yod he va he Jehovah. Elaim in the sex. This is what uh, symbolically is. It should be there. But unfortunately, if we are fornicators, Jehovah Elohim is not there. That's why the spinal medulla is called the throne of God. But the throne of God, which is Jehovah, God, has to be nurtured by Elaim, by the goddess of the sea, which is always coiled three times and a half as Kundalini in the chakra Muladhara, in our sexuality. In other words, our own particular goddess, physically speaking, is sleeping. We have to awake her in order for, for her to rise in the medulla, in order for Sarah Vasti to be united with Brahma. Why do one of the axioms of uh, Gnosticism states, do not you forget the Maha Asura. Maha is great. Asura means demon, or the great demon, or the great Lucifer, in other words, the Maha Asura, that great force that descends from above. Do not forget ye, the Maha Asura, the Lucifer from India, or the Hindu Lucifer, that revolted against Brahma. Because that revolution of heavens is not only written in the Bible or in Judaism or in Islam, it's also in all religions. So the Mahasura revolted against Brahma, the creator. Brahma is above, you know, the, in the pineal land. And because of that, <coughs> Shiva, the Holy Spirit, precipitated him into Patala. Patala is the earth. As it is written, when Adam rebelled against God by tasting of the fruit, he was kicked out to till the ground, to work with the earth. The earth is the physicality. So in other words, all of us here present are children of Satan. Because the Bible talks about two types of children. The children of God and the children of the devil. The children of the devil are the outcome of fornication. This physical body is the outcome of fornication. It's called Babylon the Great. The mother of adultery in all these generations of the earth. Everybody carries it. But we have the opportunity as we talk in many lectures, to repent. And that's why the Ten Commandments were given. 
for those that want to rise again to the top or to return into the Garden of Eden. You see? Ten Sephiroth, ten commandments. And these ten commandments relate to the way in which we handle the tree of good and evil, the spinal medulla, and the two polarities, the heaven and the earth, in our physicality, in order to develop that that we lost. Let us explain and let us read. According to the Ten Commandments, it is written, <coughs> I am Yod Hava, your Elohim, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of servants. With servant is of the is that energy related with Malkut, which in Hebrew is Mitzrahim, Mitzrahim, Mitzrahim. It's translated as Egypt. So Mitzrahim, in other words, is our physicality that the Bible translates as Egypt. And those servants that are working in Mizraim are we. Because servant is Obd, is the serpent of the left that fornicates. It's a serpent that relates to the sexual fluid that is ejaculated through the orgasm in order to create children of Satan. We are children of Satan. Because we are created through the orgasm. So therefore, we are slaves of the earth. Servants of the earth. But of course, these man commandments are related or given to those initiatives that are working themselves in the mystery of that. And says, This commandment relates to what is written in Genesis 1.3. Let there be light, and there was light. For the light of Shekinah in Yesod Malkut fortifies the faith in the pineal gland, which is where we find the secret of Eheye Asher Eheye, the crown, the father, who is called light as it is written in the Psalm 27, verse 1. Jehovah is my light and my Jesus, my Yeshua, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When you start transmuting your sexual energy and you know that the light of Elaim, the goddess of the sea, has to rise in your spinal column. And then, this is precisely the moment when you say it in yourself, there, let there be light. And the Kundalini awakens, and there was light. Start to rise into this, to the pineal gland. So that energy, that light, is connected to the light, the ins of or, which is a crown, keter, of light on top of the head of the saints. The tongue of fire. So, this is how you understand that it is written, I am Yod Hebav He, your Elohim, your Elaim, who had brought you thee out of the land of Egypt. Because that energy is related with your soul. And you are coming out of your physicality. Out of Egypt. Because you are slave of Egypt. Servant of the sin. Because he who fornicates commits a sin and becomes a slave of that. 
But when we stop fornicating and we start transmuting the sexual energy, and then we start experiencing that exodus in the lower level. Because Jehovah is my light and my Jesus. In other words, our own particular individual Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, salvation, is that fire that takes us out of Egypt. Individually speaking. Now, the second commandment states, You shall have no other Elohim beside me. Or better said, the second aspect of that commandment, which is the first. If the first, I am your Elohim, who have brought you out of Egypt, is Keter, Eheye, the one that I am, Chochma relates to the second. You shall not have other Elohim beside me. Because remember that the holy name of God appears for the first time in Chokmah. Yod He Bab He. That's the holy name of God in Chokmah. The Son. Which means devotion. Which is equal to Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. <coughs> For Israel is a firmament that must be liberated. Israel is formed by the particles of Elohim, trapped in Egypt, who must join the body chitta, which is called heaven, Serampin in Kabbalah. As it is written in Genesis, and God made a star also, and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. In other words, you, have, you shall not have other Elohim beside me, means that you have to liberate all of those elements that we call Israel, the particles of God trapped in the ego. And to take them amidst the waters. Is to let the waters separate the waters and make a firmament. That brings us into our mind the moment in when Moses was in front of the sea and split the sea in two. So let the waters separate from the waters in order for Israel to leave. And to go to the promised land. What is that promised land? It is the spinal medulla. When you are working in sexual transmutation, you are liberating also, through the annihilation of the ego, those particles of God, which are trapped in the ego. And when they are liberated, they go and become your consciousness. That are those stars that are, that it says in the book of Genesis, that God also made the stars. And only to shine upon the earth, which is our physicality. When you liberate your consciousness, that consciousness gives you wisdom, knowledge, intelligence. And that illuminates your physicality through your spinal medulla. Remember that that promised land is not physical land. Is the fourth dimension. Because your spinal medulla relates to the fourth dimension, Eden. So, in the measure that you are liberating those elements, which are called Israel, the particles of God trapped in your ego, you are making that firmament within you, that heaven within you. That heaven in Sanskrit is called Bodhicitta. There is no other way to make that. If you don't uh, uh, comprehend your ego, if you don't annihilate it, how are you going to make heaven in the midst of the waters? 
And of course, if you don't do that, you, even if you don't want it, you will have other Elohim beside your inner God. Because those particles of God trapped in the ego are like other gods. Of course, this is like idolatry. Remember that many uh, states, many people state that we shouldn't be idolaters. Therefore, we don't have to have statues in our temples because we should love only one God. Meanwhile, the temple is the body. God is our inner God, Jehovah Elohim, that we have to have there and not to have other Elohim beside. But we have a lot. Because it's also written in that commandment. You shall not carve any image, which is a letter with Bina. You carve e images, idols within you, through the sexual force, because it's the creative force. How many idols do we have? We have three. The demon of the mind, the demon of evil will, and the, e in, and the demon of uh, uh, desire. But these three demons create seven heads of demons, which are lust, greed, envy, gluttony, laziness, pride, lust seven other idols and for those seven idols legion of idols so we are idolatrous even if we belong to only uh, a religion that only worship one god because there are three religions that worship only one god islam judaism and christianity and all of those people that are there which are us are idol worshippers because we have a lot inside. The only one that worships only one God is Chokhmah, the Son. Devotion only to the Father, because the Father and Him are one. But we are not one with the Father. But Chokhmah can help us if we work in ourselves. If we through sexual magic, through the work that we know, liberate the particles of Israel, which are related, of course, as you see, with the stars, with the zodiac, with the 12 constellations. Those parts are inside of us, fortunately trapped in Egypt, Mizraim. Do you see that? Trinity is precisely related with all the spinal medulla. Because in other parts of the Bible, Moses said this commandment. You shall love your God with all your soul. The seat of the soul is a pineal gland. That's your soul. Sahariya. To remember God always. Only one God inside of you. With all your mind. Which is the head. With all your heart. And with all your strength. Which is the sexual strength. So this is how you see. That in the midst of the tree of knowledge. Is precisely the first commandment. That you had to accomplish. With all your soul. Is here in the pineal gland. Keter, with all your mind. Is the two brains. The two hemispheres. Chokhmah and Bina. With all your heart is Tifereth. Which receive the strength of Chesed and Geburah. Through the lungs. And with all your strength. Which is Yesod. Sexual force. Which receive the strength from Netzah and Hod. Your kidneys. So to do that first commandment, physically speaking, is to put all the force of your kidneys and your sex in the sexual act, all your heart, which is related to it as well, and all your mind, which is also related with it, 
and all your soul, the piña gland, remembering yourself in the moment when you are performing the sexual act, and after that as well, and before that as well. That's the first commandment. So that's why the Ten Commandments were given. In the midst of the waters means in the midst of male and female waters. For the law, Dharma, is established within us through the sexual waters. And let the firmament divide the waters from the waters. That is, let the liberated particles of Elohim to separate the pure waters of chastity from the impure waters of fornication, which is lust, the origin of idolatry. You see, there is where finishes the first commandment. Because the first commandment implies all of this. When you enter into the path of the tree of knowledge. But if you fornicate, now you understand why when Adam and Eve fornicated, reached the orgasm, they become idolatrous. They didn't love their God. Because all went down there. To the tree of death which is clipot. The second commandment states, you shall not take the name yod he bab he your Elohim, in vain, which relates to what is written in Genesis. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place. For the waters, sexual fluids of the Asad Malkut, are he, and these are under Yod He Vav, which is Ial, the holy name. The waters of Yasad, sex, must gather together in one place. That place is Hod, the place of truth. In other words, the waters must not flow to that other place which is Klippath, hell. For when you fornicate, you separate the lower He from the holy name of God. Thus, you take the name in vain and create Cain, who is the father of lying, as it is written in Genesis 4 1. And she, He, the sexual organ, conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Yod He Bab He. So in other words, your physical body is He, or the holy name as we were explaining. Your sexual organ is He, of the holy name as we explain. When you are in a sexual act, men and women are in a sexual act, behold, phallus, uterus, man, woman, yod He, bab He. One word. That's the secret of the name. So, to utter the name of God is to perform the sexual act. Because God is a creative force. So, when the men and the women are in the sexual act, they are yod Hey bab Hey, With the power of creating as the Elohim. But... If you fornicate, you separate the lower He from the other letters. And you send the fluid of your sexuality to hell, to clip off. So therefore, you have pronounced the name of God through the sexual, God, uh, sexual act in vain. So you see how the second commandment is related with that? Every time that you go into the sexual act as an alchemist, you should remember that. In the moment when you are performing the sexual act, with super efforts, do not fornicate, do not reach the orgasm. Because even if you are on the path, if you do it, you are pronouncing the God, the name of God in vain.
Remember as well as it's written there that when Eve and Adam ate from the fruit, reached the orgasm, fell into temptation, Eve created Cain. As we explained, Cain is the outcome of fornication. And that why it's written that Cain was a murderer and the father of lying. So that is alive in us. We are Cain, in other words. Children of Eve through fornication. And of course we have to learn not to pronounce the name of God in vain. But the beginning is the sexual act. Because in the beginning was the word yod he bab he <coughs> and the word yod he bab he was with God with Elohim in other words Elohim and the word yod he bab he is God and that is the beginning. All things were created by him. Or by them, we would say. And any, anything that was created was not created without them. Without him. And him is life. And the life is the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. In the very sexual act is Satan. Ready. This is how Satan comes from God and says, Okay, I will test him to see if in reality he loves you. Because Satan can separate the hay, the lower hay, from Eau. And then come back to Elohim and says, I told you, he was just bubbling words. Just worshipping you in vain. I separated the hay. The physicality of them. And sent the energies down there. I put him into temptation. Or her into temptation. And he pronounced the word in vain. Now. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. Which relates to what is written in Genesis 1.11. Let the earth, the physicality which is connected to Zayin, the seventh letter, which is the Shabbat. So let the earth bring forth grass, herb, yielding seed. For the Sabbath, the bride is Malkut, which through Zain, the woman, united with the man, the Bab, produces virtues and blessings to the soul and spirit. So when you transmute your sexual energy with your Zain, which is the left serpent, which is fallen, and you are rising that serpent and you start transmuting that energy, that serpent brings the force, the energy of your sex and enlighten your pineal gland, your seven chakras, your seven churches. This is how you celebrate your Shabbat. This is how when you enter into Shabbat, Saturday in other words, you keep the Saturday holy. Meaning, you light your menorah. You know what is a menorah? Seven lights. Those seven lights of the menorah are in your spinal medulla. And the woman is the one that has to light the menorah. And who is the woman? Is that Zain, that serpent that rises from Malkut. Who is the woman? Eve, that served the Lord. Because when your woman served the Lord, you are respecting the Sabbath. 
But if you are fornicating, if you are ejaculating your semen, you are reaching the orgasm of the beasts, you are not respecting the seventh, the Bet Shabbat, the Bet Sheba, or the Queen of Sheba, the Saturday. You are not respecting it. So therefore you are not developing virtues, powers, because the soul has to develop powers. And remember that the Sabbath is related with Binah. We talk about the Sabbath in other lectures. We say that it's related with Binah, with Tifereth, and with Malkut. The Holy Sabbath is the Divine Mother, which rises when you transmute the sexual energy. Tifereth is called the Sabbath day. Because when you enter into the Sabbath, for instance, right now, we are in Saturday. But it is the day of Saturday. And the Sabbath begins in the night. When the sun goes down, sunset begins Saturday, according to Kabbalah. And that night of Sabbath is called Malkut, the bride. That's why Friday night is the beginning of Saturday, when the true alchemist performed the sexual act with his bride, with his wife. But if he fornicates, he is not sanctifying the Sabbath. He's polluting the Sabbath. Then the day, which is the sun, which is Tifereth, that light doesn't shine. Because that light, of course, is connected to the other lights above. All of us that enter into this path want to develop. Virtues, powers. And we can do it if we respect the Sabbath. But in this day and age, the Sabbath, which is the night of Sabbath, which is the woman, is disrespected. Pornography, prostitution, everybody looks to the woman in a very despicable way. And the man, who is the representation of the sun, the representation of the sun, which is the light of the Sabbath, the day of the Sabbath, is also polluted. How is it is to lower Sabbath, to respect the higher Sabbath, which is Bina, the Holy Spirit, when they don't know anything about that left serpent? Because the left serpent is fallen in the fornicators. But it is standing in those that transmute the sexual energy. Honor your father and your mother, which relates to what is written in Genesis. Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. For Yodhav Elohim is a sun and a shield. Psalms, Psalm 84, 11, verse. And Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 20 is written. Thy son, thy son shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For Yodhav shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy grief shall be ended. <coughs> your mother, I said in the beginning in the lecture, is the moon, and your father is the sun. Or our Hermes to Jesus stated, the father of that holy thing is the sun, and the mother is the moon, and the wind take it into his belly, and the earth. It's his nurse. Hmm? You have to liberate that thing in order to make the miracle of one thing. So, of course, the sun is the father and the moon is the mother. And we have that within. Inside of us. That's why ancient people worship the sun and the moon. But ignoramuses who do not know anything about Kabbalah of alchemy and the mysteries of the myth, 
the Hebraic myths, and other myths, they think that ancient people were literally worshipping the sun and the moon. And they thought, they said, that the sun was a deity and the moon another deity. But with the development of science, they discovered that the sun is just the center of the solar system and the moon rotates around the earth. They are not gods. The ancient belief is what they said ignorantly. Without understanding that the genius, the genius, or the, how do you call it? G-N-N-U-S. Genius. That genius that we have in the blood, according to biology, comes from the solar light and the transformation of our metabolism in the blood. And that genius comes the gene in the sexual organ. So the genus is the sun, and the gene is the moon inside of us, which come from above, from the superior forces of Elohim. Ava Elohim and Ima Elohim are within each one of us. Is our father mother. Each one of us has their own. Or have their own. When we understand that, as Isaiah says, El Chava is the sun, is the light of the sun. And Jesus, the Christ, said, I am the light of this world. The light of this world is the sun, solar light, the Christ. So to honor father and mother is to honor all the forces that you have for your inner being. <clears throat> you honor your father and your mother in the mystery of that because from that emerges the monad your own spirit in other words Abraham emerges from Ava and Ima Elohim in that so your own spirit is the one that accomplishes with the fourth commandment. In order for you to accomplish the commandment, honor your father and your mother, you have to remember your being. Because he is the sun of the sun and, and the moon. The Ruach Elohim. Fifth commandment, you shall not kill, which relates to what is written in Genesis. Let the waters bring forth abundantly nefesh haya, the moving creature that hath life. This also teaches us that we must not kill Adam, that is called a living soul, nefesh haya. And Adam became a living soul. For the breath of life, Aleph, of the body is in the blood. Dam in Hebrew. So Adam connects Aleph to Dam, the blood, the heart of any person. For the air, Aleph, contains the image of the Ruach Elohim, the outcome of the supernal triangle. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thus, the image of God is in the blood. Therefore, whosoever sheds Adam's blood, by Adam shall his blood be shed. For the hay made Adam in the image of Elohim. Do you realize that? In this day and age, people justify killing. But that Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which means air, or the symbol of air, relates to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the one that goes into the Dam, Hebrew for blood. And this is how we have Adam in the blood. That is precisely the image of the Elohim that becomes sexual energy. And when we transmute that, 
then the image of God appears on the earth, which is Adam. This is what we had to do, to create Adam into the image of God. But we, if we fornicate, we are killing Adam. Or we are, in other words, simply, we are expelling Adam from the sexual organ, which is Eden, voluptuousness. How are we going to create Adam inside of us if we are expelling Adam every time that we perform the sexual act? If they, through the orgasm we expel that image, Adam, out of our body, Adam can be created. That's why we are always out of Eden. And of course, that life, Nefesh Haya, is written in the Bible. Let us create, let us create, says, let the waters, you see, of sexuality, of course, bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life. Those moving creatures that have life is, are called animals or animas, souls. So, we have to respect the life. But we don't do it. We are killers. Because Cain, the killer, is inside of each one of us. Very alive. If we were united with God, sometimes the initiates receive the commandment, or the permission, we will say, of God, for us to execute like the angels of death. The angels of death have the power of killing anybody to cut the silver cord and to cut the life of anybody of us. But those angels of death are under the command of Mother Death, which is always acting under the law of karma, cause and effect. Any awakened master can do that if he receives the order. The best order that we can receive is to kill Cain inside of us. But Cain is a killer from the beginning. That's why Master Jesus says, when the Jews or the Kabbalists at that time came to him and says, we are children of Abraham and we are not children of fornication. We have one father who is God, they say. In other words, they said, we are children of Brahma, the creator, because we do not fornicate. We know the mystery of that. So therefore, we are children of God, children of Elohim. And Jesus said, well, if you were children of God, you will follow the commandments of Brahma, or you will follow Brahma, because Abraham did all the law perform all the chastity, all the works of that, and you are not. You are just believing in this, believing in that, but you are fornicating. So therefore, if you are fornicating, if you are having children of orgasm, you are children of the devil. Simple as that. Children of the orgasm, in other words. Children of Satan and the lust of your father you want to accomplish. He created Cain and he was a killer from the beginning. So therefore you shall not kill, but everybody here kills. We kill our own force, we kill Adam, we kill uh, Habel every time that we fornicate. And we expel them out. So, comprehension of the ego is necessary in order, in order not to be a killer. But the beginning of not killing is not to fornicate, not to reach the orgasm. You shall not fornicate <coughs> at the sixth commandment that relates to Tifereth, which relates to what is written in Genesis. Let the earth, physical body, bring forth Nefesh Haya, living creatures, 
after their kind. From this we learn that if any man seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. And the woman also with whom men shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. Because Adam's kind is the image I left in the heart, the genius in the blood, dam, that becomes the likeness, the gene in their kind, sex. The gene is Aleph, Palus uterus, man, woman, sexually united. This is how the earth, physical body, bring forth Nefesh Haya, living creatures after their kind. Eve, Hava, sex, should bear children only to Adam, her own kind. What is their kind? It's Aleph. Because that Aleph is the breath of God that enters through the nostrils. And that goes into the blood. So in Hebrew, kind is written with mem. Yod Nun Min Sex Mina Sexual Force. So when you said kind in Hebrew, you are pointing the sexual organ. And it is very easy to understand this because we know that all the creatures have children according to their kind. The cats have cats. You don't ever see, for instance, a cat having a dog or a dog having a cat, right? So everybody has their own kind. In nature, that kind, sex, acts according to the species, according to the level. In the animal kingdom, including the intellectual animal kingdom, everybody fornicates. So everybody has children according to their kind. But if we understand that that kind that talks, that is written in the Bible, related with God to Adam, as we explain, Aleph is the wind, is the oxygen that we breathe, related with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the human level. That air purifies Dam, the blood. So the blood becomes a dam. And that is the image of the Elohim, the kind. That kind goes into the sex and becomes the gene. So the gene contains that Adam, our kind, because we are human beings, physically speaking. So we have to bring children into the world according to our kind but first we have to be that kind if we do not transmute if we fornicate how are we going to bring children according to our kind we still that kind that we are that type will be always animal beast what is the difference between the kind of the human being and the kind of the animal is that the animals fornicate, they reach the orgasm, and this is how they multiply. And if we go into our level, we call the intellectual animals, what is different? Do we multiply differently like the animals? The irrational? No, we do it in the same way. So therefore, it's the same kind, the same quality. Even if we believe in this or that, or we follow this tradition or this other tradition. Our kind, physically speaking, in fact, clearly show us that we are animals. But if we want to belong to the children of God, 
then we have to transmute the image of God. Not to ejaculate the genes. If you ejaculate the genes, you become an animal. And you will multiply and we will become, as Jesus said, you are children of the devil. Children of the orgasm. And the lust of your father you want to accomplish. He was a killer. And in the animal kingdom, the lion is a killer. The tiger is a killer. And everybody kills in order to survive. You want to be different? Well, do not fornicate. Transmute your kind, your salem. You see, the likeness of God is written with dalet. And then the other word which is written, mavet. Mavet is death. But if you put the word, uh, the letter dalet before the word mavet means likeness. The likeness is in the sex. Dalet is that. If you take Dalet out of that word, which is likeness, you remain with Mavet, which means death. And that's why when you polluted the tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge to fornication, we remain with death. And we didn't become children of God, but children of the devil. The whole planet, this planet Earth, is a Luciferian humanity. And that's why when the extraterrestrials come here and see this humanity, they say, this is a Luciferian humanity. But funny, they think they are children of God. Some of them believe it to be the chosen ones. Or the selected ones. Meanwhile, all of them are demons. You shall not steal. Which relates to what is written in Genesis. And Elohim said. Behold. I have given you every herb. Bearing seed. Which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree. In which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And then. He added in Genesis, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, you shall surely die. Therefore, you shall not steal anything from me. You see? If we are with God, we develop all the inner parts of God. But if you fornicate, you take from God in order to fortify your ego. You go into hell. But you fortify your ego by stealing the energy of God, the energy of the Holy Spirit, in order to make alive your golem, your ego within you, or within us, in other words. So all of us are thieves. We are thieves. We are stealing the energy from God in order to be here every time that we fornicate. And that's the, first, the commandment is really there. You shall not eat from the tree of good and evil. Because the day that you eat from it, you will die from me. And we do it, but we're still still in the light. Every time that we reach the orgasm, or we perform the sexual act, we are still in the energy of God. So we are breaking that commandment. If we are doing with ourselves, of course, we also steal from others. Eighth commandment. <clears throat> you shall not bear foul witness against your neighbor. Which relates to what is written in Genesis. And Elohim said. Let us make Adam in our image after our likeness. Witness is odd. The Sabbath day. Tifereth. And his companion is odd. The Sabbath night. You shall not bear foul witness against your neighbor means you shall not bear a false image, a falsity of your Elohim within his likeness. Malkut. Whosoever bears a foul image of himself in Malkut 
is as if he carries a false witness against that which is high, since the Sabbath day is the true witness. The Sabbath day, as you see, is your own soul, Tiferet. When you believe or you somehow have a experience and you find that you are the master such and such and come and open your mouth and say, hey, I am the master such and such. And that is not the true witness because the true witness in you is odd. The Sabbath day, the son, the father. Hmm? The Sabbath day is the son, is the father. And the father has a holy name in you. When I, for instance, have an experience and receive the name of my inner being, thank goodness, at that time the master was alive. And I talked to him. And then I was, I was sure. Now, of course, later on, I experience more the true name of my God. And I know his true name. But I don't utter him in vain. But I know that also I receive other experiences. I, in the past, for instance, experienced that I was Moses. And somebody told me that I was Moses. And in reality, it was related with something that I was doing at that time within me. Not that I was Moses. But that part of me, which is Moses, was doing that inside. And I talked to the master Samuel and said, yes, this is, this is the truth. Because Moses himself is an immortal master. He's a superman. And you are not Moses. But that part of you, yeah, that's understandable. But how many Gnostics that didn't have the opportunity that, thank goodness, I had with the master Samuel on board, have experiences? Because if I had experienced that I was Moses and I misunderstood that, they can misunderstand also that easily. Because every single master in the Bible is an archetype within you. Moses is an archetype. Jesus is an archetype. Elias is an, ar an archetype. Azazel is an archetype. Raphael is an archetype. All the seven genii are an archetype. Samael himself is an archetype within each one of us. Every single master of the day is an archetype that we have to develop. But we have our own particular name. And if we lie, have a false witness, a false odd, in other words, in us, because odd relates to the cerebral spinal fluid, the throne of God. And if we put in that throne, which is odd, a false image, and is not related with the true image, we are lying. We are, of course, pronouncing a false witness against our neighbor because we are uttering, opening our mouth, saying this and that, and it's a lie. And we are lying to ourselves. So therefore, that commandment, you shall not bear, bear to carry inside of you a false image, a false witness against your neighbor. Because the false image is a falsity of your Elohim with his likeness. That likeness is the physical body. In other words, that is called mythomania. To lie to yourself. And in order to lie to others, first you lie to yourself. How are you going to develop your inner being through the alchemy and to the work that you're doing in yourself? If in the beginning you have a false image of your God. The Matthew Samael says in his books, I have met many that says that are John the Baptist. Like a dozen of them. Who is the true John the Baptist then? I have met many out personally that said that this is the master such and such. And then I found another one in the Gnostic groups. That said that he is the master, such as that he had experience. And another one that says he is the master, the same master. I said, how this master is in three bodies? You know? And it is because the Gnostics, when enter here, 
they lie to themselves. It's called mythomania. And it's easy to fall into mythomania, easily. That's why any experience that you have, meditate in it, and don't become identified. Because wherever your God is, He is your God. And He has a name that will, will not change, no matter what. But if you put that a false image, then you are worshipping a God that is not your God. So therefore you are lying, you are sinning against Him. Which is inside of you, related with your neighbor. Remember that it's written, you shall love your own God with all your strength, with all your heart, etc. And thy neighbor as thyself. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife. Which relates to what is written in Genesis. And Elohim said, it is not good that Adam should be alone. I will make him a companion for him. Chava, Eve, the sexual organ, is the Isha of Adam. Therefore, shall a Ish leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his Isha, and they shall be one flesh. Thus you shall not covet your neighbor's Isha, sexual organ, Malkut. When you have your wife already working with you, or when the woman has his already her husband, they have the Isha. Because the Isha is a sexual organ. And the Ish, in other words, the Ish is the cerebral spinal fluid. That's the Ish, the fire, masculine fire. And the Isha is the sexual feminine fire, the sexual fluid that are in both bodies. So when you are married to a woman or the woman to a man, both of you have their own Isha. The Isha for the woman is the phallus of, the, of, of her husband. And the Isha for the husband is the vagina of her wife. That is the Isha. It's not like many people think that this commandment is for the men because you shall not covet any other woman. Well, and what about the woman? She is free to covet any man? No. Yeah. Both should covet the Isha, which is also the physicality. That's why Master Jesus says, it is enough to look at any Isha with lust in order to commit adultery. But the woman also look at men with lust and they commit adultery because they are coveting an Isha that is not their Isha because that body might be married with another woman. That's talking, of course, in relation with alchemy. That's why one of the defects or sins that we have is adultery. How difficult is not to be an adulteress? Because you have to control your sight, your psyche, your mind, in order not to commit adultery, not to covet the Isha of the neighbor. But we are, of course, coveting. Everybody covets there. That's why Jesus says this adulterous and perverted humanity. Because if we adulterate every time our own fluids. And the last commandment is, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Or as all the Bible says, you shall not covet thy neighbor's goods. Which relates to what is written in Genesis. Bear fruit and be a rabbi. In other words, be a master. Because rabbi means master in Hebrew. Bear fruit and be a rabbi. And replenish the earth and subdue it. Develop your own house for the Lord according to your kind. In other words, you have your own inheritance. You have to develop in your house in your home, which is your body, all the kingdom, that's why it is written, Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. So, our inner father, our inner God, has his own kingdom, his own, his own wealth. 
And we have to put that wealth in us and to develop that wealth and to enjoy the wealth, which is wisdom, consciousness, virtues. When we do that, we shall be careful not to covet other people's goods. When we, in the earth, we are always coveting what others have. I would like to be like him and to have the wisdom, the knowledge that he has, or to have the riches that he has, or that they have. And then you are coveting something, and you are forgetting your God. You shall not covet that. You have your own riches. Develop that, and be content with that. Because each one of us has a different uh, inheritance that we have to develop, our, according to our own ray. And that's why it is written, in the very end of this, do not you ever forget the Mahasura, the Hindu Lucifer, who revolted against Brahma, the creator, for which reason Shiva precipitated him into Patala, the inferior world, Malkut and Klipath. Here we are. Hmm? We are that Mahasura, or part of him, that revolted against Brahma. Or we will say it. We are Satan that revolted against Abraham. Our own particular individual God. Do you have questions? It says here that um, let us make uh, Adam in our image after our like likeness. And the, the name uh, Michael, the angel, is a name I think it translates to who is But well, the question is, how does the Archangel Michael uh, enters into this lecture? Because Michael, uh, the meaning of Michael is he who is like God. Michael, right? Who who is like El, like God. And he is the one that is fighting against Satan. Obviously, it relates. I mean, the image of God, as we said, is in the heart, which is the sun. That's the genius. G-E-N-U-S, genus, in the heart, the kind, that particular element that we have related with our own particular God, that becomes the gene in the sex, which is the likeness. So, of course, our own particular Michael is that part of our God, which is called Israel. Isis and Ra, El. All the forces of God in one, reunited and making a sun shining, who is like God, Michael, the true. And for that, we had to fight against the dragon, against Satan, the opposite, which is in the physical body, which is the opposite of the spirit. It's in the earth. The earth is the physical body. So the fight that we have to do is in the physical body. That's why in the Middle Ages says, Satan is your physical body, is the devil. You have to defeat, to overcome the temptations of the flesh. So our flesh, this is the habitat of Satan, the king of the world, the king of the earth, that we have to defeat. How do we defeat it? With the help of Michael, who is like God inside of us. And then, of course, we develop Adam, who is made into the image, the genius, and to the likeness, the gene of Elohim. Yes? What is the term of fornication? That's come, uh, I mean, the term, the English word fornication comes from furnace or from fire. Mm -hmm. uh, the way in which we ejaculate the fire, which contains the genius and the gene of, of us inside, 
which is in the blood. To fornicate, in other words, is to reach the orgasm, to ejaculate, to eject the element of God, which is in the sex, out of the body. That is fornication, literally. Of course, after that comes other levels of fornication, because also we can fornicate through the word, or through, through the thought, many ways in which we lose the fiat lux, the light of God within us. The main way is, of course, in a very sexual act, or through any type of orgasm, that energy leaves the body. That's fornication. Therefore, you shall not fornicate. Yeah, the crown of life is Keter, Chokmah and Binah, but rules by Keter, the crown. The crown of life, of course, is a father inside of us. If we are faithful, like he is, because faithfulness relates with Chokmah. Be faithful, like the Lord, Chokmah, until death. The death, of course, of the ego, of Cain. If we completely annihilate all the ego, then we are crowned with the three primary forces. They incarnate in us. Because this is the goal of the universe. To incarnate Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keter, Chokmah, Binah. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Inside. But this is only possible if we kill the dragon, Satan, with the help of Michael. A uh, question there in the back. Children of the light is the question. What are the children of the light? The children of the light is, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. The children of the light are the outcome of transmutation, the outcome of alchemy, the outcome when we stop fornicating, when we start transmuting the energy, and that light, which is Shekinah, rises and creates within us Isaac, creates within us Jacob, Creates within us Joseph, creates within us Jesus, and unfolds that light in many. That's the children of the light, which are children of God. And the contrary, the children of darkness, which is fornication, which is us, the ego, Hanas Muzen. Now, the children that are being born physically in couples that do not fornicate, that do not ejaculate the sperm, in the sexual act, they are called children of scape. Meaning that in the sexual act, only one sperm scapes from the sexual glands of the man. So therefore, that type of birth is special. But only one sperm. And that sperm is taken by the power of Jehovah Elohim. Or Elohim. That intelligence takes only one. And that is, of course, a, a type of birth uh, among the Gnostics. That's a very special type of birth. You have to prepare your body in order to have that type of birth. Because the type of soul that comes in that body is also related to their kind. Another question? You had to ask that to Samael on the or because I was not there when he was engendering them. <laughs> when we affirm something, uh, if you do not say that what you are uttering you don't have a complete consciousness of that. No, that's not mythomania. Because if you recognize that what you are uh, affirming is not from you, but from the masters, 
and you recognize your own ignorance, your own nothingness, and that you are developing that, you recognize that, that's not mythomania. But if you claim that that knowledge is your knowledge, that is mythomania. Because you have to understand and comprehend things before saying it. In other words, mythomania is based on this. When you steal the things that do not belong to you. So therefore, everything that you state that the Master Samael on the earth states, and he says, I am saying this between quotations, because I don't want to adorn myself with other people's wisdom. And that's why, for instance, in this lecture, we put all the quotations, which are from the Bible, and we explain it in accordance to Gnosticism. And we have to develop that. Because all of this knowledge related with the Hebrew myth of Satan is written in the Bible. But in order to uncover that and to discover that, you had to meditate. You had to see that and to realize what is true and what is false within you. Another question there. Yes, okay, but what about the release of one sperm? How is that not fornication? Because uh, uh, you don't reach the orgasm or the spasm, which is fornication. And that uh, uh, the releasing of one sperm is done by the will of Jehovah Elohim. It's not you that are doing it. You just pray to God. And God takes that sperm and fecundates your wife. You don't even know it when it's happening. If you are awakened, yeah. But many are uh, in the couples of narcissism and say, well, what happened? My wife is pregnant and I didn't reach the orgasm. Well, it's one sperm. Easily escapes when it's very strong by the will of God. And by karma, of course, too. But if you do it on your will, and in the moment you say, oh, I want a child, and you just ejaculate maybe not seven million of sperms, but maybe one million or maybe hundred thousand of sperms, it's a fornication. And there are many couples in Gnosticism that also have children in that way. It's a couple that I ask, uh, or they told me, without me asking, it says, you didn't ask me, but I'm going to tell you. You know, my child, my wife thinks that is a child of escape, but I didn't tell her that I just, you know, a little bit, because I don't want to upset her. I said, you should tell her that, because she believes that is that, you know. Right? Well, I said, after she gets birth, I will tell her that it wasn't my fault. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, any child that is born from escape doesn't mean that they are done, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. They have a nice body, healthy body, because it's, it's from escape. But they have to self-realize themselves too, right? Their body maybe is special, but inside they have the ego very alive. And if they don't follow the, the rules, well, they go with their special body to hell. Another question? Yeah, I'm sorry. What do you suggest when you said that uh, you have to meditate with, when you see something, when you read something from the Bible or anything, you have to meditate on it, but is it when you meditate, you should point at the tree of life, the tree of knowledge in your meditation in order to... Well, you, you yourself is a tree of, 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 of life. You yourself has a tree of knowledge inside of you. So... The wisdom, the light that you will get from that part of the Bible that you are trying to decipher in you will be according to the level of the tree of life that you developed and according to the, the level of the tree of knowledge that you developed. Therefore, for their fruits, you will not them. So everybody develops according to their fruits. If you uh, have nothing developed inside of you, how are you going to get the wisdom? There are many people that read the Bible and that they sit down and try to decipher what the Bible is saying about, you know, the knowledge, wisdom. Meanwhile, in the moment when they go to bed with their wives or their husbands, they fornicate. So therefore, there is no light. The Christmas tree has no lights. The tree of knowledge, neither. So, 
they just will say whatever they think in their intellectual animal mind. So if you want to get wisdom, light, you have to work with the two trees. The fruits of the two trees. That's the clue. And there is a question here before we go up there. The three and a half. Why the Kundalini is call it three times and a half in the Muladhara chapter? What is that? The three and a half. The three are the three gunas related to what we study. In the website, you can find a lecture related with the three gunas. And the half are the other developments or things that comes from those three gunas that we had to develop. Question? Yeah. Um, so someone can willingly control the amount of terminal distance? Yeah, I believe. There are many uh, people that, uh, like in Tibet, the black magicians, the black lamas, they control, uh, not only after that, they ejaculate the whole thing, and after that they reabsorb it. So it's a kind of Bakroli mudra, says the master, that we never spread or, or teach how to do it. But anyone can uh, develop the, that control in, in his sexual organ, right? And to do it is not a, a big deal. In the beginning, of course, uh, uh, since you are accustomed to fornicate, it's very difficult to learn how to transmute. But after years of transmutation, that comes a normal thing for you. It's not difficult. It's just a matter of uh, practice practical thing. So, any question? Yeah. I don't know if it relates, but you mentioned the menorah before. Mm -hmm. It's Hanukkah now. I was just wondering what's the uh, symbolism of the uh, miracle of the oil? Well, the miracle of the oil that induced like nine days, I believe, right? Yeah, they, kept, they thought they had enough for one day, but it lasted eight days. Well, uh, let me tell you that uh, miracle uh, can be repeated in each one of us. If we know about the night sphere right, or the menorah, maybe with nine lights or seven lights. Sometimes there's seven lights, seven, right? The seven chakras. Nine relates to the ninth sphere. The oil, of course, if you keep your oil, if you don't ejaculate your sexual force, obviously the light will be always there forever. Hmm? Nine by nine, by nine, by nine, by nine, by nine, by nine. Because in every nine you engender uh, an element in your psyche through transmutation. That's the mystery of Hanukkah, right? Of course, we have to study that, that mystery, right? Because the oil, all of a sudden, without any expectation, was there having always light, right? What? The oil is the shaman, is the outcome of the water. If you don't ejaculate, you will have your menorah always there with light. And will you perform the Hanukkah miracle within you? So, another question? <laughs> Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.